Hi, my name is Corinne Summers. I will be doing Good Girl by Alice Da. I hope you enjoy. She's a good girl. So kind, sweet, gentle, innocent. Always listens to her parents, never speaks back at them. She's also smart. I heard she gets straight A's. These were phrases I had heard all my life. And I'd be lying if I said they didn't make me feel a little happy, proud even, especially when I'd look over at my mom's face and see that she was beaming, although she tried to pass it off as if she didn't care either way. And to me, that's all that mattered. Flash forward to my first year in college, I craved change. Yes, I was happy to be the good girl, but I wanted to be something more. <laughs> Looking back, <laughs> oh God, how cringe I was. I had been mostly introverted my whole life, so I decided that college would be the perfect time to try and reinvent myself as an extrovert. It became my mission to make friends with everybody in the first two rows of my Gen Ken class. And that's where I met him, the very shy Asian boy with the softest smile. I don't know what intrigued me so much about him. Maybe it was that I saw a bit of myself in him, the self that often blended into the background, shy and gentle. Soon enough, a friendship formed and we were practically inseparable. We studied together, played foosball in the duck, and spent many nights just talking about life. I felt seen for the first time, connected by the string that tied us together that was our Asian American identities. We'd both been labeled as the good Asian kids by everyone in our lives. He was the first person I opened up to outside my family and soon enough, friendship transformed into love. At first, it was perfect. Being in a relationship with your best friend, what could go wrong? I started staying over at his dorm little by little until I practically started living there. It, everything moved so fast. I had never cuddled or slept over with someone before. It felt so nice, so special. I never knew that I loved the warmth of another person next to mine until then. It was perfect. Perfect, until it wasn't. Not too long after we started ha started dating, uh, Shy Boy asked me if I'd ever considered having sex. I was taken aback. Sure, I had seen movies and maybe I was a little intrigued by the concept, but nothing more. Not knowing how to respond, I just gave an ambivalent answer with a slightly nervous laugh. Little by little, Shy Boy started dropping hints that he wanted to do more sexually explicit things, things that I had never done before, things I didn't know anything about. I don't know how the first time you have sex is supposed to go normally, but for me, the strongest emotion to this day is pain. Every time after sex, I would go to the bathroom and notice I was bleeding. And then the next strongest emotion that would consume me would be shame. What did that mean? I didn't know. I didn't have anyone to ask because I was so ostracized by everyone else in my life at that point. I always thought that losing your virginity was this milestone I had to overcome to shed my innocence and be cool, but all I was left with was pain and the growing sense that I was losing control over myself, body and mind. I didn't even want to have sex because it hurt and I bled every time, but how could I say no when he looked so sad every time I gave excuses? How could I say no when he would say, okay, I guess you don't love me enough. How could I say no when he would smile so gently, coaxing me to say yes again? He knew everything about me. So I could trust him, right? So I said yes, again and again. One day during winter break, my life took a turning point. I met up with this friend from high school that I hadn't seen in over a year. Uh, we'd just gone shopping and we were on the way home and I just spilled my guts. I don't know why I chose to open up to her, but I did. From the time the, si time, from the, time the sky was a pale purple sunset to pitch black, I talked, 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 I bawled. I didn't even know what I was saying. I was simultaneously the most relieved yet 
vulnerable I had ever been. After I finished my story, my friend gave me the warmest hug. She told me I needed to get help. The warmth of her hug reminded me of the beginning of my relationship with Shy Boy. All I wanted was the warmth of another body next to mine. So how did it go so, so wrong? For me, finding help was the easiest part. I broke things off with Shy Boy, started talking to a therapist, and started opening up to my friends more. Telling my parents, now that was the real beast. Every once in a while, my dad would make remarks like, he seemed like such a nice mannered Asian boy. Maybe you should give him another chance. Boys can be boys and stupid sometimes. Every time my dad would make another lighthearted remark, I just felt this balloon of anger grow within me, larger and larger until one day it just burst and I yelled at him, you don't even understand anything. He's not good. But what does good even mean? Who is a good person and who is a bad person? For my parents, Shy Boy was labeled as a bad person as soon as they found out that he'd taken advantage of my inability to say no or refuse. They also yelled at me. How could you stay in that relationship so long if it was hurtful? I can't believe you let something like that happen to you. I know my parents love me. They were just hurt by the fact that their daughter had to suffer because what parent would ever want to see their child suffer? I remember one night when my, when my dad just broke down and whispered to me, I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. I managed a small smile and I told him, it's okay, dad, you didn't let me down. But I couldn't help thinking that I'd let myself down. What if I'd said no more firmly? What if I hadn't broken down over time to do something that I didn't want to do? What if he didn't even want to have sex? What if, what if, but then could I truly blame him completely? Yes, he did coerce me, but I don't even know if he knew that he was doing that to me. After all, I'm, I'm sure that he was as lost as I was when it came to sex because it's such a taboo in the Asian community and neither of us knew anything. But what I can say for sure is that I was hurt by what happened. And what happened was without a doubt traumatic for me. I always thought being good went hand in hand with being pure, innocent, and the model minority. But just because I'm no longer a virgin doesn't change who I am. Although how I see myself may have changed fundamentally, I am still a good person. Someone my parents are proud of, someone my sisters look up to. I'm not a good Asian girl who listens to her parents and is studious. I'm a good person who wants to be a source of positivity in this world. It would be a lie to say that today I'm perfectly okay because truthfully I'm not. There are days that I get panic attacks and break down because I see reminders of Shy Boy across campus. There are days that I am so deeply depressed that I can barely go to class. But because I am who I am, I try to see the slivers of sunshine through the storm. So I'm even here today telling you my story, the bad, the ugly, the messy, and everything in between. While I still struggle with what happened to me every day, I hope that by hearing my story, even one less Asian peer won't have to go through what I went through. Because at the root of this is that we as Asians just don't talk about sex. What consent really means, how to protect oneself during sex, among so many other important lessons to be learned, and I want to change that. Just like there's not one definition of good, there's not just one proper way through an individual's journey when it comes to sex, as long as it's rooted in informed decision making and consent. No matter what path you choose to take, I hope that you know that it's a beautiful path. I am a good person, and so are you.